Good morning, everyone. My name is Valentina Morales. Uh, I am here as a technical support in the family agriculture team of the, re the regional office of the FAO for Latin America and the Caribbean. And today I'll be accompanying you as moderator. You may you all be very welcome to this first uh, version of uh, the uh, dialogues of knowledge and practices in family farming. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that we have in simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, English, French and Portuguese that you'll find at the bottom part of your screen. The series of dialogues and knowledge and practices in family farming seeks to reflect, to promote a collaborative um, farming and knowledge between governments, farmers, and other stakeholders related to the sector and seeks uh, to bring to the fore the contributions of family agriculture within the framework of a transformational agenda of uh, agri-food systems. Now, always taking into consideration the uh, global action plans uh, for the 10-year period for family agriculture of the United Nations and the realities for Latin America and the Caribbean established in the Santiago Charter uh, drafted at the end of 2021. Uh, this uh, set of dialogues so will be held via the regional technical platform for family farming uh, managed uh, by the regional FAO Office for Latin America and the Caribbean and, and enjoys a technical support of the unit uh, for the participation in family farming and the agri-food network. Uh, later on, you'll be able to find the link to our platform where you will be able to find uh, this uh, set of dialogues and other sets of exchanges uh, that we have conducted and that we will continue to hold. All the uh, versions of the dialogue will be articulated with this new integration and global cooperation that seek uh, to uh, arrive at concrete uh, solutions and experiences that may exist uh, to strengthen family agriculture. For this series of dialogues, we hope to consider three uh, aspects. Uh, first of all, the contribution of family farming to the environmental and climatic agenda. Secondly, the investment in family farming uh, and the sector to transform plural inclusive transformation. And thirdly, uh, family agriculture and the construction of sustainable markets. Uh, for this first edition, which is co-organized with a specialized unit on family farming of Mercosur uh, via its pro tempore chair of Brazil and its national coordination in the Ministry of Agrarian and Family Farming Ministry. We will be talking about the potential of agroecology and family farming in order to face up to the challenges posed by a transformational agenda of agri-food systems, emphasizing environmental and climatic challenges. For this purpose, we have structured three sessions that we will be working on, and we will work with the three issues. The first session is today, as I already mentioned, we will focus on the principles principles, the fundamental practices of agroecology and its uh, link uh, with climate change and uh, the environmental agenda. And we will also identify challenges, opportunities in order to promote family farming and agroecology as a key strategy in the climate uh, change and uh, uh, environmental agenda for the second session that will be held on October 12th that uh, uh, it, we will focus on agroecology and the institutional framework and we will uh, listen to presentations on the progress achieved in terms of public policies but by countries in Mercosur and how these interrelate uh, with family farming. For the third session we will have uh, presentations of uh, experiences from throughout the world that will enable us to reflect upon the potential to promote uh, agroecological transition and family farming. Today, we will have uh, four distinguished panelists. Uh, we will have a presentation by Dr. Uh, Emma Sulikandi, who uh, is uh, the agriculture officer of uh, the um, at the EFAO offices. After the presentation of uh, the doctor, we will listen to the presentation of Emil Friesen, who is main advisor uh, for uh, of the Agroecology Commission. And after that, we'll listen to the experience of Brazil via the presentations that will be delivered by Dr. Vivian uh, de Gorio, who is Director of the Innovation Department uh, for Family uh, uh, Production and uh, Ecological Transition from the Ministry of Family Farming and Agroecology, belonging to the Ministry of Agrarian uh, Development and Family uh, Farming, and Marcos uh, Resinski, who, who will talk to us on behalf of uh, uh, organization, of family farming organizations. Following uh, the presentations of our 
for distinguished panelists. We will hold a we will have a thirty minute Q and A session in order to um, discuss the presentations. Uh, so we invite you to take note of any queries, questions that you may have for our presenters, and. Um, um, share them via the Q&A uh, session that you'll also find at the bottom of the screen. In the view of time, I will be t letting presenters know when they have one minute left uh, to conclude uh, their presentation. So we'll begin immediately with a presentation by Dr. Emma uh, Siliprandi. Uh, please, uh, Doctor, you have the floor. You have 10 minutes uh, for your presentation, and I'll let you know when you have one minute left. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. I believe that this uh, debate is extremely important because often we do not take into consideration how agroecology can uh, become a solution for the problems uh, that we are experiencing in terms of uh, climate change uh, throughout the world and that are increasingly severe. I would like to share my screen now. And thus, uh, we will have uh, a somewhat more structured uh, view of this. First of all, I would like to say that the FAO is working uh, with agroecology, or has been working with agroecology for some time now. I form part of the International Secretariat uh, for the initiative uh, to expand uh, the scale of agroecology that was launched in 2018 here in Rome with uh, other UN organizations. And uh, as from there, we developed a whole series of guidelines, uh, frameworks, in order to help countries uh, to promote agroecology within their own policies. We also worked with civil society, with uh, diverse uh, organizations, so with academia and research sectors. And I begin by showing you the 10 elements of agroecology that uh, were approved by FAO member countries in 2019 and that uh, provide us uh, with a guideline to work with policies in different countries. So why do we say it's important to promote agroecology? Well, there are countless reasons for that. Uh, agroecology enables us uh, to work on issues of food security and nutrition, biodiverse diets uh, to promote local development and agro agri inclusive agri-food systems. It also enables uh, greater resilience in terms of the level of uh, agricultural plots, uh, resilience also at a territorial level and a significant improvement of uh, the the way in which uh, agricultural families, indigenous and traditional families that live, and it also contributes uh, to the reduction of rural poverty. So why then promote agroecology? Well, among other things, because uh, we acknowledge the importance of uh, social groups uh, that today have been marginalized in uh, mainstreamed uh, policies uh, such as family agriculture, indigenous peoples, uh, women, young people, and agroecology also acknowledges uh, the contribution of uh, the knowledge of these uh, um, peoples and also acknowledges that it is necessary to support them so that they can gain greater access to productive resources. And that is tremendously important. The connection between agriculture or between agroecology and family farming uh, and indigenous farming is very strong because it is as from there that we obtain knowledge about how to work with uh, nature without uh, degrading it. Here, I wanted to highlight uh, some uh, other elements in detail in terms of how 
we are able to, or how agroecology can help everyone uh, to work on climate change uh, by supporting biodiversity, and how that also has an impact upon people's uh, nutritional aspects, uh, because uh, agroecology provides a way to uh, protect uh, nature, uh, to promote uh, the wealth of biodiversity, to restore land and ecosystems uh, that are degraded uh, today, whilst at the same time producing uh, safe, uh, healthy food, which is diversi diversified, uh, the uh, diversified uh, ag uh, agroecology systems. We're only talking of environmental protection in general because with agroecology, we are also able to protect fauna, uh, water reserves, and uh, we are also able to work on ge general uh, climate change uh, protection. On the other hand, agroecology uh, strongly emphasizes uh, the issue of participation, of co-creation, and of connectivity, of working jointly, favoring cooperation among family farmers and and other um, stakeholders, especially groups of women, young people, indigenous peoples, and thus uh, making the territory much more dynamic. Now, what type of policies uh, can contribute to strengthen agroecology? Well, we are talking or referring to the whole agri-food um, system. It, it's impossible to think, uh, it, it's possible to think uh, from policies as from production and, and also about distribution and consumption. In this uh, graph, and please excuse me because it's in English, it comes from a work published uh, by the FAO to, together with colleagues from the bio division, bio vision and other organizations. And it uh, tries to depict uh, this uh, complexity. Agroecology is not, uh, does not simply imply working on production. It does not only imply being concerned with the environment, but basically it implies working with communities and with uh, ecosystems in a connected fashion. I also wanted to share with you some very quick examples that are the result uh, the results uh, of the application of a, an instrument that the FAO, that the FAO provided a few years ago in order to characterize and measure uh, agroecological experiences which is called uh, tape here we have the results of 3000 uh, productive uh, plots uh, located in eight countries in sub-saharan Africa. And what we can see is uh, that uh, the units uh, that uh, have higher scores uh, in terms of agroecology, in terms of the, well, let's say, uh, more agroecological properties are indeed the ones that have greatest uh, diversity in uh, of land, and uh, they they produce um, food of animal origin, fruits, vegetables, and so on. There is a diversity of diet uh, that helps, of course, the nutrition of people. So the more an agroecological plot is, uh, the better the diet. Uh, here we find results uh, that uh, illustrate aspects uh, related uh, to soil health and uh, biodiversity in general terms. Uh, when it comes to, to vegetable production, animal production, and also the natural vegetation and pollinizers. So the more agroecological, the greater the health of the soil and the greater uh, is the biodiversity in these plots of land. Uh, these are all results uh, that evidence uh, that agroecological works and that we need to have uh, policies in order to support uh, these practices. Here we find uh, the result of, well, that was already published uh, in a paper that uh, reveals how agroecology promotes uh, multiple ecosystemic services without undermining production. And therefore, uh, we don't need to be concerned with the sense that uh, uh, that uh, agriculture is not productive. It is productive, but at the same time, it, it promotes the fertility of soils, um, uh, vegetable production, uh, nutrient cycling, and so on and so forth. And 
therefore we have an important body of information here scientific information and uh, discussions and uh, case studies that show that uh, agroecology truly supports uh, the work the mitigation work and adaptation to climate change that is why as uh, fao we are working on supporting countries in order to develop uh, policies uh, that uh, promote uh, family farming, indigenous farming, traditional farming, in order to improve uh, this relationship with the environment uh, through agroecology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for sharing with us all the concrete results and the impact of agroecology and also the fact that the benefits for ecosystems don't really affect production, which is one of the stigmas, uh, but it has, agroecology has. And you also talked about uh, different practices and the contribution it does for nutrition. Together with communities and the ecosystems that and everything is seen holistically. So thank you for your introduction and helping us with the different concepts so that we can go deep on the discussion about agroecology with the next presentation by Emil Soon, the main advisor for the Coalition for Agroecology. Uh, Emil, you have 20 minutes uh, to present. I'd like to remind you that we have simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, Portuguese and French and English, and you can access by selecting the appropriate language after selecting the icon, the globe icon. Thank you very much, uh, Valentina. <clears throat> I will be sharing my screen uh, with my presentation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, <clears throat> inviting me to uh, address this meeting uh, and an opportunity to talk also about the Agroecology Coalition. The uh, <clears throat> Current food systems are not sustainable. And I just want to repeat what most of you are very familiar with, that uh, our food systems are responsible for one third of the greenhouse gas productions, the loss of bad, the majority of biodiversity losses, the pollution of soil, air and water, the vulnerability to climate change, and also not being able to address the triple burden of malnutrition. Uh, we are actually moving backwards with more people being hungry uh, than in 2015. Uh, and finally, uh, the question of social inequity that is still uh, very much prevalent and the loss of cultural values. All these negative aspects are directly associated with our current food systems based on industrial agriculture. So we need transformational change. And since 2016, there's been an impressive number of major reports that are saying, basically, we cannot fix the problems by just improving our current system. We need transformational change. We need a different paradigm. And whether we start from underperforming subsistence agriculture or an industrial uh, agriculture that is not sustainable, we need to move towards diversified agroecological farming. This uh, different paradigm that we call diversified agroecological systems aims to address simultaneously economic, environmental, climate mitigation and adaptation, health, social and cultural objectives and not one at the expense of uh, the others. Uh, the current systems have been focusing essentially on the economic performance at the expense of all the others. Now, this paradigm is based on 13 principles of agroecology, which are aligned with the 10 elements uh, that Emma presented, the uh, 10 elements of agroecology adopted by FAO and its member uh, countries. Uh, these 13 principles address uh, not only the production side or the agroecosystem, but the entire food system. And uh, I do not have time to go through each of these, uh, but there is a very strong social dimension 
uh, to these principles. And also, they form a package. This is not a picking list where you can say, I will address this one principle or that principle. Uh, we must address all principles at the same time. They are all applicable everywhere at all scales, but the actions you take to implement these principles are very location or situation specific. So it's not a silver bullet in the sense of one technology that will solve all the problems. It's a different paradigm and the set of principles are generally applicable, but what you do locally is location specific and addresses the specific problems, including the uh, social cultural uh, values of the people uh, that are affected. They, these principles are very useful in designing projects or initiatives that aim to transform food systems in a sustainable way. And as I already mentioned, the social dimension is extremely important about building social capital uh, of the people and empowering them. So this different paradigm is not just about a set of agricultural practices. It also is about innovation, taking the best of all innovations, but those that are compatible with the 13 principles, not any innovation, but those that are compatible with the principles of agroecology. And it's combining modern science with traditional and farmer knowledge. It's also about changing the social relations, empowering farmers, adding value locally, privileging short value chains, linking consumers and producers. It's a holistic, integrated approach to reach all these different uh, objectives simultaneously. And of course, family farmers will be essential in the implementation of the new paradigm. So agroecology is not just one tool among others that can be used uh, to address the current problems. It is a different toolbox altogether. It's a different paradigm, uh, a different design. So uh, as I uh, mentioned, we, whether we start from underproducing under or underperforming subsistence agriculture or unsustainable industrial agriculture, we must apply these 13 principles adapted to the local conditions in order to move towards diversified agroecological systems that aim uh, to satisfy all these objectives. There are now examples of agroecology at scale, whether it's in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America. More and more uh, national policies are also uh, supporting agroecology in Mexico, Brazil, Senegal, Nicaragua, India, France, Denmark, just a, a listing a few, but these are increasing, uh, I would say, very much and <clears throat> uh, we are seeing in the last uh, couple of years a tremendous increase in the realization of the potential of agroecology and the development of supportive policies. Now, uh, as Emma uh, already uh, mentioned also, the economic performance of agroecology is now well demonstrated uh, from a productivity point of view the image that agroecology would not be able to feed the world or is less productive is been contradicted. Uh, recent studies, for example, of large scale deployment of uh, agroecology or natural farming in India has shown an actual increase by 11% of productivity compared to conventional uh, chemical uh, agriculture. But what is very important is higher income because of the combination of, of good productivity with the saving on uh, uh, chemical inputs, uh, we are seeing very significant increases in uh, income. And what is very important for, for small family farmers is it increases the resilience and stability uh, of uh, the production system very much. From an environmental and climate point of view, it enables to keep carbon in the soil and put carbon in the soil uh, to boost biodiversity, restore degraded land, 
And this is very important if we want to avoid further deforestation, we must uh, restore the um, capacity of degraded land to be productive again. Uh, about one third of the global uh, arable areas are degraded and can be restored through agroecology. And of course, it contributes to very important, uh, improving very important ecosystem services like water and nutrient cycling, pollination, pest and disease management. The nutrition and health outcomes are uh, very much demonstrated. It's avoiding the negative health outcome of industrial agriculture through uh, the uh, negative impact of pesticides, antibiotics and nitrates. It provides for healthy, diverse diets and also uh, uh, products that come from agroecological production have increased levels of beneficial nutrients such as omega-3 fatty acids, antioxidants and polyphenols. And finally, the social outcomes. It is building uh, social capital. It creates for more and better employment and employment throughout the year. And it links uh, consumers with um, uh, producers. And it's taking a very much cultural realities into consideration. The cultivation of diversity of traditional crops that tend to be uh, eliminated from production systems in, in, in industrial agriculture and the integration of traditional knowledge. So the, this transformational uh, change requires not only these changes in production, pra production practices, but also changes in knowledge generation and transmission, changes in social and economic relations and changes in institutional frameworks in order to implement and guided by the 13 principles and 10 elements. But one can ask why is, with all the evidence that is now available, why are things not happening faster? Why do we not see a, a more rapid transformation? And there are, we identified eight uh, obstacles that we call lock-ins, uh, which are slowing down and sometimes preventing an agroecological transformation. And I don't have time to go through each of these, uh, but I will just mention two. One is how we measure success. In the past, uh, success has been in agriculture has essentially been measured by uh, productivity, tons per hectare, uh, and uh, or, or economic uh, income only. We must, uh, measure the quality of nutrition, uh, the, the um, also environmental impact, uh, the costs to the environment, the cost to health, these things have to be measured uh, as an outcome of our system. And finally, the concentration of power in, agro in the agro-industry, which is influencing policies in uh, in, in, in maintaining an industrial model in place. And this uh, needs to be overcome as well. Now, two words about the Agroecology Coalition to conclude. Uh, this was uh, put together, uh, created in 2021 in the margins of the UN Food System Summit. Uh, we have uh, today, so it's, it's a coalition of the willing, uh, bringing together both countries and organizations. And today we have 47 countries, three regional commissions, the European Commission, the African Union Commission, and the ECOWAS Commission in West Africa, and 140 organizations. And that number is increasing every month uh, and rapidly increasing every month. There are five working groups uh, in that uh, are the operational arms of the coalition. There's one on policies, one on research and innovation, one on financing and investment, one on communication, and one on implementation of, uh, of agroecology initiatives on the ground. And these are the, the ways by which uh, collaboration is being fostered in the uh, coalition. Now, uh, to conclude, 
some key messages I want uh, to um, uh, highlight here is that we need fundamentally different food systems. Uh, it's not about improving the current systems that will not work. We must rethink uh, and, and consider a different paradigm of diversified agroecological systems. These systems are economically performing. That has been well demonstrated, particularly in situations of environmental stress. They are equitable and just. They are empowering food system actors, including uh, and main actors as family farmers. They allow us to adopt, uh, sorry, to adapt to climate change, to protect the environment and increase biodiversity. And change is already happening. It's not something that is uh, to be done in the future. It is just to be uh, accelerated and amplified, scaled out, uh, in order to accelerate the transformation, the agroecology coalition is providing an opportunity to accelerate this transformation by fostering collaboration among countries and among organizations. And it's well recognizing the role of family farmers that will be essential for a successful food system transformation. So with that, I'd like to, to thank you. Uh, I hope I have stayed within my time allocated uh, and I would be happy to answer any questions later on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emil, for your presentation, for your excellent presentation. Um, thank you, Emil, for your excellent presentation. You were just on time, so we thank you for that. It's very interesting to see how, over the past few years, uh, uh, global reports on the environment and climate change have been incorporating and positioning family agroecology as a practice, as a science, as a movement uh, that responds uh, to the agenda and that may contribute uh, to the sustainability of our societies. I would also like to highlight something that you mentioned related uh, to how agroecology uh, highlights and preserves uh, traditional knowledge and combines that uh, with the new sciences, with innovation, with uh, technology, and how this uh, adapted uh, to local territories increases or improves uh, productivity, but also income resilience and um, of agricultural systems, so which is something that you highlighted in your presentation. Thank you very much for showing us the work of the Agroecology Coalition and its invitation to adopt agroecology as a tool for the sustainability of our systems. And perhaps in the chat, you could leave a link so that people could gain access uh, to the web page uh, to know more about this work that you're doing. So thank you very much, uh, Emil, for your presentation. Now we'll move on to know the experience of uh, Brazil. We have made a slight change in the agenda. So now we have the honor of having our presenter, Mr. Uh, Cassio Trovato, who is General Coordinator of the Innovation Department uh, for Family Production and Agroecology of the Secretariat of Family Farming and Agroecology, belonging to the Ministry of Agrarian Reform and Family Farming. We will also be accompanied by Mr. Lusinski, who will talk on behalf of the organizations, and both have 20 minutes to deliver your presentation. I'll let you know when you have approximately two minutes uh, so that you can round up. So, Mr. Trovato and Mr. Lusinski, please go ahead. Uh, please excuse me. I was uh, thanking the FAO, uh, Valentina and Pedro for this uh, very important uh, dialogue on agroecology because it's a process to build and to socialize this. We are not going to talk about uh, uh, details here. We already clearly have that knowledge and uh, 
uh, with the objectives of Emma and Emil. Uh, we have obtained uh, information in that sense, and I would certainly like to congratulate them as well. We are here talking about uh, Brazil with all the ideas that have been put forward. As you know, the situation that we face in the development of agrarian uh, reform, uh, agrarian development, uh, we are trying to recover uh, some situations in a gap uh, that emerged uh, during previous administrations, where the ministry itself uh, was limited. And uh, the Ministry of uh, Agrarian Development uh, is uh, once again uh, following the Brazilian policy, and the important issue here is agroecology. That is the important issue for this ministry. We already have a historical construction, uh, primarily based on, uh, on rural social movements uh, that provide us with a whole series of practices and knowledge and uh, different uh, constructions and uh, public policy that public policy has to accompany. I don't know if you can see me or whether you're being able to see the presentation. Can you see me or the presentation? Now we can see the presentation. There you are. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Let's uh, go to the beginning of the presentation. Well, I can talk to you about uh, the perspective of the construction of these new policies, uh, the social movement and the construction, and also involving the conservation of forested areas. That is why we are devoted uh, to the construction of uh, frameworks, uh, guidelines, and with uh, Marcos, who is uh, very enthusiastic with this. Uh, what we find here is a situation that we are experiencing at present, as from the prospect of uh, agri-food systems. We have uh, the Green Revolution that has tried uh, to destroy the knowing how to be and how to live of uh, family agriculture. This uh, model of green revolution is uh, still in force and has implied a tremendous challenge for us. Increasingly, the work of uh, multinationals have a direct impact upon the practices, uh, those practices and that knowledge. And I refer to the fact that this is a very strong barrier, especially when it comes to seeds. And uh, that uh, impact, which is so strong, is also evidenced in the role of the state as a mediator with industry. That is where money comes up, and there is a tremendous impact. And, uh, and playing the role of the state, which is something that we have to perform, and not only, and that is valid not only for Brazil, but for several other realities. Uh, for us, uh, this is a tremendous challenge, enabling us uh, to recover these spaces as a strong, with a strong state. We also have uh, commodities and uh, the economies of scale and its improvements, high costs, the leasing of land. Uh, sometimes uh, leaving uh, the land is uh, easier for life, especially for the life of young people. This implies a uh, rural exodus on the part of young people, and thus uh, uh, rural areas age. And that is a very negative scenario when it comes uh, to production and to agri and to more sustainable agri-food systems. Making industry generate uh, this food in a sustainable manner. Next slide, please. And uh, this is one of the 
ways uh, to go about uh, doing this, that we have discussed uh, this. And with this uh, new uh, initiative by the Development uh, Ministry, one of the factors that was fundamental is that agroecology has changed from being a secretariat uh, to a ministry. Today, we have the, uh, the Family Farming and Agroecology Secretariat, where all public policies within the realm of production, agriculture, and livestock policies fall within that umbrella or under the umbrella of that uh, uh, secretariat. And that leads us uh, to clearly, objectively, and quickly rethink uh, the ways and the uh, food systems uh, that we want to promote and have for the future that are decades. And so the prospect is very strong in this sense, and increasingly, uh, we are trying to enter into agreements with uh, rural uh, social movements. So what is it that we want? Uh, do we want commodities or rather do we want uh, the production of food at a vegetable scale or at the level of uh, animal protein? Oh. Move ahead with this. Another strategic challenge is to establish uh, uh, the human relationship between man and society and man and the environment. How ecology is transformed in rural areas in order to establish uh, the fundamental role of agroecology uh, out in the land. Uh, often we know that the massification of education and the educational process, and especially for uh, rural youth, is uh, very distant uh, from nature and from ecology and distances us uh, in our lives uh, from that. How can we transform? How can we recover? How can we uh, recover that knowledge in the society, ancestral knowledge? And that uh, is a very solid role that we have to play and that we have discussed with the public policies of the agrarian development ministry. And at present, uh, we are headed in the right direction, I would say, but still. Uh, we, we haven't, we have still not done enough uh, because we need a low carbon agriculture. We, we want an agriculture uh, with a carbon fixation. And that aspect is extremely important for us. And uh, we are entering into a dialogue in that sense. Is it compensatory? Yes, uh, but uh, we as Agriculture Secretariat uh, will have to face up, uh, uh, get involved with this debate, which is a world debate, how to reconstruct uh, then this debate on low carbon agriculture so that we can move on to a culture which involves a fixation of carbon. And that is absolutely fundamental for our initiatives. Next one. Here we see the model, the issue of malnutrition. We have overweight, uh, poverty. And what does all this generate? What does this uh, imply for our society and even for rural societies? So, well, this uh, transformation that we have experienced over the past few years in Brazil, uh, well, a large part of the poverty con is focused uh, or con is concentrated out in rural areas. Uh, decades, uh, and that has existed for decades, and these are realities that can be evidenced how to face up to poverty, malnutrition, and over overweight, well, that uh, as from uh, Brazilian society as a whole, uh, family agriculture is important in this process of changing this scenario that has uh, already, that already exists out in our rural areas. These are the strategies we're thinking about. Strategies that are related to this, how to build agro-food and sustainable system based on the principles of agroecology, which is key for us. Either using a consolidated agroecology with farmers with already practice and knowing how to use these systems, and also thinking about other farmers and the way in which they produce in order to extend uh, this uh, transition process of agroecology. These are topics that are key, of course. Now, this is not an isolated effort. All of this is associated to uh, food safety systems such as 
the right to nutrition and the right to healthy food. This was already mentioned Brazil considers all of these aspects, so we should think about mitigation and adaptation policies to adapt to climate change, and how we should deal with this process, always thinking about mitigation uh, rather than the adaptation process. We need to think about how we can create these uh, processes or spaces so that agroecology has room and uh, the power to face these challenges. Considering the diversity that exists in Brazil, a country that is considered a continental sized country. Another thing that is important is communication for the transformation of the production and food habits. We know that agribusinesses have conquered most of most of what I did as a result of false communication, communication that gets farmers and also consumers. And we've seen this in movies and so forth, TV series, and you've seen this, I'm sure. And we need to think about how we can rebuild these communication spaces. Communication is key today. Communication needs to be fast today also. So these are the strategic aspects in which we're working on uh, in the uh, Secretary, Secretary of uh, Agro agricultural family farm. We have two areas uh, that I'm going to be talking about. I, I would like to leave some minutes also uh, for Marco. So we are working in two pillars. Uh, we have the national police on agro organic agroecology. And I think that it's worth highlighting something here. Uh, this uh, group of uh, the government that is here participated only in the first one, in the, in the first planapo. The second one that took place between 2016 and 2019 was a period when there was chaos. We had the first planapo and the second was built, uh, but we didn't really have the time to execute it. And now are working in the construction of the third edition of the National Plan of Organic Agroecology and Production. Now, this is very important to mention. This policy allowed a lot of achievements of women in the country. We need to continue to value the key role that women play in this process to strengthen uh, the strengthening process to understand the importance of agroecology, which is a multidisciplinary field that allows us to build here we can see the second pillar, which is related to uh, the healthy food program. The purpose of this program, the purpose of this program is to extend the agroecological transition with uh, the offer of food of, say, healthy food through family farming and their organizations. So to think about the agroecological transition required for the thousands of farmers in the country, farmers that may be in the Amazonia, for instance, or the different areas, different regions in Brazil, the different environments that we have in Brazil, which are quite diverse uh, with different agro-systems. So what we need to do is to, to appreciate, to put value on that knowledge uh, that farmers have, and also to consider that scientific knowledge, you know, 
to be able to align everything, always keeping in mind to favor our farmers. Now, this is not an isolated effort. All of this is part of a dialogue, of a debate. I think that all countries are working on this discussion. Climate change is something that we all uh, know about, but 30 years ago, only family farmers could see this. If you actually talk to them, most of them will tell you that for a long now, the climate is changing, but most people didn't realize. People in the cities or in the academia, politicians didn't realize these changes. Now, this is also important so that we can have this conversation with our farmers. Here we can see a clear example. And I think that Emma mentioned this. Rio Grande del Sur is a clear example of, of what's happening in Brazil. Two years ago, we were talking about droughts, and today we're talking about flooding. Now, it's absurd, really, what's happening in Brazil. And it's something that we, we see in, on TV when we see the number of natural disasters affecting different regions in the world. What we see here are some practices that we've created together with farmers working with the social movement. So we're strengthening uh, and training farmers, which we think it's key. Now, this uh, mass transition I mentioned a while ago. Now, one of these practices is the direct uh, planting system using uh, using uh, hay in the different uh, lots uh, to produce vegetable. Here we see this practice, and this is the type of knowledge that we should teach farmers so that they can start using these practices, which are sustainable practices. Okay, so what about the main challenge? Machinery and appropriate equipment for this type of production system so that farmers, along with the technical capability and the social movements in the countryside, and along with the academia and the different research groups, can implement this work. So this is not an isolated effort. We really need equipment and machinery that, that can satisfy this production system, as we can see in the, in the screen. Agroforestal systems is also key to increase diversity in order to extend a production and food systems and um, to deal with carbon issues. These are very important aspects and are also part of are part of what consumers and producers can get from this type of systems. Now, this is the last slide, and I'm going to be talking about seeds. This is also key to us. So that we can make sure these seeds do not have any transgenic uh, elements. So we are facing a lot of challenges. So we now understand the main principles of agroecology. And now we need to think about how we can face that challenge. We are going to, we need to face the situation in the field, in the country. We need to understand the value provided by a food 
I'm going to give uh, offer the floor to Marco, my colleague, so that he can uh, continue with the presentation. And I'm going to open to any questions that you may have after our presentation. Bom dia a todos e todas. Obrigado, Cássio. Good morning, Obrigado, everyone. Valentina também pela mediação. I would like to thank Valentina and Cassio, uh, Valentina for facilitating this uh, seminar and also like to say hello to Emma as well and thank them for their presentations. They're, they help us clarify significant topics. Now, my presentation be very brief so that we can have time at the end uh, for uh, a Q&A session. Because I would like to have the possibility to listen to all the panelists. I'm Marco, I'm a family farmer. And today, I'm part of the coordination of international relations of our Confederation of Family Farmers in Brazil. School Contrafe Brazil. So I'm going to be making a presentation from the perspective of organizations and also from the perspective of family farmers so that you can understand how we see this, uh, how we understand this concept of agroecology. I would like to start by, uh, by, by saying that family farming it's a crucial aspect for us to start discussing agroecology. We could not have a, an implementation implementation that can preserve the environment and produce healthy meals if we do, if we do not understand model needs to be built based on a redistribution model including uh, agricultural reform so as to strengthen agro-family farming the other aspects that we need to understand is that family farming throughout history of our uh, countries, even when we didn't have the public policies or even when we didn't really have the incentives from the state, that process uh, of resilience and resistance uh, came about naturally. If family farming wasn't, wasn't a way of life, most likely, we wouldn't exist today as a category or, or as, a, as an association, or we wouldn't even have agroecological practices. If today we are working in agroecology, it's because of this the resistance and the resilience of family farmers, the culture of uh, country people. Another thing that it's important to mention, to us as an organi as organization, is that sometimes NGOs and academia continue to try agroecology as something with a romantic perspective. They say it's very nice, it's very nice to work on agroecology. And that's the way we see it. We see it as something that has a romantic component. And we uh, treat agroecology as a niche as if it were a market niche, as if it were something that cannot be applied to everything. So if we want to make progress, if we want to move forward uh, towards agroecology efficiently, we need to try it as a policy that should be established for the entire group of uh, family farmers. We also need to have political uh, a political definition Nobody can implement a agroecology process in a specific country or in a specific region in the world if there is no political decision to do it. So it is an, a matter of political definition, and we're very clear about that. But when we had a government uh, that enables uh, dialogue with civil society, a government that listens to the civil society and actually has the capacity to create a group of public policies, we had progress. Even if, from the perspective of a budget, we 
were living with the crumbles of the public uh, the public uh, budget because neither family farming or agroecology was part of the public budget in the Brazilian government, not even in the best moments. So if we observe, and if we actually make a comparison of the investment for family farming, in comparison to large uh, agricultural businesses, for instance, and if we see the investment on agroecology in comparison to the dominant model, we can see that there is that we always work with the crumbles of the public budget. And that reflection is important to make because we need to start thinking uh, about this from the perspective of our governments as well. We need to think about the intensity the governments want to uh, work on this and the budget that we're going to have available, even from the perspective of international organizations, FAO and others. We need to be clear on that. In terms uh, of uh, being able to work with a set of uh, policies um, providing us uh, with that uh, possibility. And why do I say that? Uh, well, you could say that you're being contradictory. You're talking about uh, family agriculture that is resilient, uh, resistant, and that is uh, capable of uh, self-management. And sometimes you say, OK, if we have no public investments, uh, we will continue to work uh, with agroecology as a niche, as a policy for a few, a policy for a few people that produces a specific amount of uh, food uh, in general terms, that in general terms in urban centers is uh, consumed uh, by an elite uh, with purchasing power. And we want to do away with that. Agroecology must uh, be produced and uh, must be worked on with uh, the peoples in the fields, in the regions, in the forests, uh, pure food, uh, the pure food, the quality food that is produced uh, must be aimed at the poor. We cannot continue with the logic that agroecology e or certified pure organic food is uh, to be sold in uh, street fairs or in markets uh, or on the shelves of supermarkets uh, for a specific elite market. And that is how a whole series of challenges uh, arise uh, for other policies. So we need to have credits in place, promotion policies, technical assistance. In other words, so the state uh, must be a promoter of public policies so that that uh, production capacity on the part of family farmers may indeed uh, be put into operation. Everything that Casio has said is of tremendous importance, but there is a fundamental aspect here. Nobody works with agroecology simply in order, uh, simply because they feel it's important to preserve the environment. Uh, the farmer that works with agroecology as a result of his uh, consciousness, as a result of his or her way of life, uh, he or she knows that it's important to preserve, uh, to produce and to preserve uh, water, the authentic uh, 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 nature and requires uh, incomes, resources in order to uh, upkeep their families. Uh, market access is an issue of crucial importance if we wish uh, to make headway in that uh, direction. I believe that Brazil has uh, important experiences in this sense. The national school meals uh, program that presently purchases from family uh, farmers has to take an additional step. In addition to purchasing products to family farmers, they, it must also uh, buy agroecological uh, products. Uh, the PLA, the food program, institutional procurement must uh, also take an additional step in terms of providing an incentive in the sense that in addition to purchasing from family farmers, from small cooperatives, a step must be taken in terms of uh, purchasing uh, this type of food. I also believe it's important uh, to advance uh, in this perspective. 
of uh, taking this debate uh, to uh, the level of education. Agroecology would indeed uh, have to be a subject in school curricula. Uh, we need uh, to advance, uh, make progress with regards to the new agricultural technicians uh, so that they receive uh, training in that uh, agricultural perspective. And we must also hold uh, this debate in society as a whole, uh, attaching importance uh, to food security and nutritional security based on healthy production. I would say that we have uh, an interesting road ahead uh, that we must venture on in our country, but uh, we still face uh, many challenges. And I would say that the main challenge is to go beyond our debates and uh, the concept of understanding agroecology as uh, uh, something that is up to up, uh, to public uh, dispute, uh, political dispute in our society. We must uh, um, approach society as a whole, our nations, our peoples, uh, the people that uh, consume, urban peoples, urban workers must uh, be able to understand that for them uh, to have quality food, uh, food that is much more accessible, uh, what is required is... Uh, that uh, we need to put uh, that production model upside down. And that not only involves uh, technological change, but it also involves uh, the strengthening of a model based on uh, the production of family farmers. I know that uh, uh, we have little time. I have been... Uh, uh, I've tried to be very, tried to be very telegraphic, so to speak, in my presentation, uh, and of course, uh, I am quite willing, Valentina, to participate in in uh, other events and work uh, with additional events uh, on this. Uh, uh, of, uh, on additional events, uh, elements of this uh, massive challenge that we face. Uh, a last aspect is that uh, President Lula and our government uh, works uh, with uh, the perspective of generating an ecological transition plan for the next period. And we face, uh, we therefore face a major challenge. How we, as farmers, uh, the poor and uh, traditional communities, how are we going to be observed within this big plan that the government wishes to establish in terms of agroecology and um, agroecological transition, how we, how family farming will be taken into consideration in these 100 major measures that President Lula must announce for the next period. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcos, uh, for your presentation and for expressing your willingness uh, to hold this discussion. We need to discuss uh, the central role of uh, family farming in this discussion of uh, the transition towards agroecology and for providing us with this uh, political and social reflection and for sharing the message that agroecology is uh, uh, an option, an environmental, social, and economically feasible option. So thank you very much for presenting this on behalf of the Brazilian government, how the government is uh, promoting a transition towards agroecology, how it is seeking to massify this transition in uh, the country's uh, family farming, and to, mention some of the, and to mention some of the principles that we have discussing, for example, uh, the youth that you mentioned, or the role played by women in this transition. Thank you very much. And now we have a few minutes available in order to um, entertain some questions uh, that have been placed in the chat. So I'll begin with a first uh, round of questions. First of all, for Brazil, I have three questions. The first one says, given the Brazilian experience, uh, what uh, is the relationship between agroecological production and uh, certified organic production? And also how you are dealing with the agroecological transition when it comes uh, to conventional uh, producers, uh, when it comes uh, uh, to venturing on this process, on this transition. And finally, what resistance are you facing in Brazil in order to advance uh, towards uh, this new model and how you're going about uh, dealing with that. So uh, please, uh, Casio and Marco, uh, I would uh, much appreciate if you could answer these questions.
comenzar, Marcos. Do you want to begin, Marcos? Bom, uh, Marcos está com o microfone ligado, então vou falar rapidamente aqui. Uh, okay, well, Marcos has uh, switched his microphone now, so I'll answer this very quickly. Marcos has put forward uh, very evident and clear issues. Uh, we have a national policy, a national certification policy, which is known as uh, the policy for uh, organics. Um, for us, what is important as uh, family agriculture and uh, when it comes to agroecology is that we have been able to include in our policies uh, the organic certification in Brazil to include the idea of the participating partner. And uh, this uh, issue sets us apart uh, very often from what other countries are doing. We are, of course, holding dialogues with other countries in South America and uh, with other countries in general. Uh, so that we're able to work uh, on an equivalence of this uh, certification process. It's important to state uh, that this certification is uh, done uh, by farmers and between farmers uh, so that they are able uh, to be empowered vis-a-vis uh, um, -vis other production models. And that uh, guarantees the reality of agroecology as a space which enables them to identify their production. And and this uh, transition process is uh, very varied. Uh, we have uh, the farmer uh, that is very traditional and that uh, do not have a sustainable practice, especially in the field of extraction or farmers with less uh, potential and also those uh, that are already within operating within the conventional market, whom we often call uh, the little agri-business in inverted commas, and therefore, um, and uh, that is uh, our reality. And what uh, centralizes uh, uh, the guidelines, which is agrotoxic, uh, 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 products. Uh, this at present is one of the problems uh, that opens the door uh, to uh, hold a dialogue with farmers. Uh, resistance, well, Marcos has already uh, put this forward very clearly, and uh, budgetary uh, restrictions. If we had a, uh, a political prisoner, we could have uh, made progress if we had political weight, we could have made a much stronger headway in different uh, in the different uh, fields and activities of our family farmers here in Brazil. Marcos, uh, I don't know if you want to supplement that answer. Rapidamente, eu acho que assim o Cássio foi 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 preciso dizer. Well, I believe that uh, Casio has been quite precise in what he has said, and this has to do with political dispute and political decision making. If you don't uh, have a political decision on the part of a specific government or a specific segment, it becomes uh, very difficult uh, to expand on that. Uh, why? Because the prevailing model has already been organized in general terms via the major corporations and the major companies. Uh, we find the resale of agrotoxic uh, products uh, that pr uh, and they provide uh, technical assistance and they accompany uh, those farmers and sell that type of technological package on our part. Uh, we lack that same power uh, provided uh, via that technical assistance or via our organizations to be present in those plots and to take part in that debate and thus uh, to work around the idea of having a model that is uh, more sustainable. And that is why I say that this is related uh, with the definition of priorities. It has to do with public policies. It has to do with the public budget. And I believe that we have already made uh, much progress. In fact, there is a question in the chat that refers to institutional purchasing or institu institutional procurement uh, 
Uh, when we talk about the public budget that we had during the government of Lula and Dilma, at that time, public procurement uh, was not sufficient, so to speak, in order to acquire the whole uh, production. And uh, therefore, what is uh, of great importance is to continue to work in order to expand technical assistance uh, resources, uh, uh, technical monitoring resources to promote uh, agriculture and livestock, and because that is another issue. Credit, uh, agricultural credit in Brazil is designed uh, within the banking system and is designed in order to obtain a credit per product or even a credit or loan per commodity in many cases. And that is why we still, uh, Casio, have to face up to a challenge which is to uh, to dwell on existing public policies, uh, thinking about how to satisfy the expectations of that agroecological transition model. That is the main problem that we're going to face in the next period, a challenge not only faced by government, but by society as a whole. So I would like to ask Emma and Neil. Uh, I'll, I'll to ask them three questions that I'm going to try and group some of the questions from the chat. So how do you see agroecology and organic production? And how are you working to promote this product at a consumer level? I mean, how are you working on the production of agro, uh, organic agroecological products and how you can support countries so that this type of, uh, so, so that we have authorities, high level authorities participating in this uh, type of events? So those are two questions. So Emma, Maybe you can go first. Gracias, Valentina. Yo creo que con a la I think that as for organic production and agroecology production, there are always a lot of discussion, but I think that it is possible to connect those fields, both fields, so that they are not contradictory. Because if you work in the same direction to transform the agro-food system in a more sustainable way and more uh, in a way that it's more friendly with the environment. So agroecology is a little bit broader, but promotes social changes that are more transformative than than organic agriculture. So it gets to a certain point, but after that, it doesn't uh, move forward. But there are a lot of uh, aspects in common. For instance, organic agriculture also needs public policies, and it also needs public policies uh, to improve the markets, to support it, to get more funding, more to get more technical assistance. So there are a lot of elements that can be worked together. But I think that it's important to have this vision mentioned by Casio and Marco. And Emil mentioned this as well, which is that agroecology wants to get to a global transformation. And this global transformation implies he healthy food available for everyone and not just for a niche market which uh, it's normally the case of organic agriculture. They focus on a small market uh, or markets where they can uh, sell the products at, at an excess price. So the agroecology says that everyone is right to healthy food, uh, uh, production access to production that can satisfy our needs without uh, affecting uh, negatively the environment. Now, as for the policies and the role of international organizations, I think that it is, it's very important for, for the United Nations, for instance, to be clear that agroecology can contribute to this transformation. It could be, I don't know, the FAO, the FADA, the Biodiversity Convention. I mean, in general, the different uh, climate-related funds, for instance, 
etc. So all of those organizations need to be clear that agroecology is a solution. So just as the national levels need to put more money and more technical capabilities and focus on more research, the international organizations need to do the same. They also need to include these in their communications, in their letters, in, in their reports. It's important for them to reaffirm uh, that agroecology is a solution to this transformation because this is going to be considered then by the countries when creating their own local economy uh, policies. So it's important to have an uh, international consensus around these topics. And we're working on, on that. And the coalition, it's actually an important instance to convince the international sphere, but also countries individually. We are working to convince them that this is urgent, possible, and necessary. Thank you, Emma. Emil? Thank you. Uh, I want to compliment what uh, Emma is saying, and maybe going a little bit back in history. In uh, 100 years ago, at the very origin of organic farming, the concept was very much aligned with the 13 principles and the 10 elements of agroecology. Uh, what has changed is that with the development of uh, regulations uh, that um, are creating the framework for the guarantee system on what is allowed and what is not allowed, has uh, brought a, an evolution of organic farming uh, with a focus essentially on input substitution, on replacing chemical inputs by organic or authorized inputs. And uh, this has led sometimes to uh, what I would call uh, something that is incompatible with agroecology uh, because it is focusing only on the input substitution and it forgets about all the other dimensions. I can give one example of <clears throat> greenhouse produced uh, cucumbers or tomatoes in huge, uh, gigantic greenhouses of 3000 hectares where uh, very poorly paid laborers, uh, often migrants, uh, uh, are being exploited uh, in this monoculture of um, of cucumbers or tomatoes. This is organically certified, but it is very incompatible with the principles of agroecology, and it is not sustainable. So organic production can be uh, very much aligned with agroecology in the spirit it had at the origin and the way that many uh, small uh, family farmers are still practicing agri uh, organic um, uh, organic farming, organic production, but uh, because something is certified organic does not automatically mean that it is sustainable and that it is compatible with agroecology principles. Uh, this we have to move beyond just uh, input substitution and encompass the entire uh, implementation of all the 10 elements of agroecology and the 13 principles. So that that is uh, this discussion about the relationship between organic and agroecology has to be understood in this way, that it can be perfectly compatible and be uh, the same, but not necessarily depending on what actually is done in the organic production. Thank you. And I, if I can just take the, the floor here uh, to invite organizations and countries that are not yet member of the Agroecology Coalition to join the coalition, to join uh, this uh, effort now to strengthen the and accelerate the transformation. The more countries and the more organizations that are present, the more efficient we will be in getting uh, the recognition of an agroecological transformation in international debates and international policies. So I invite countries and organizations that are not yet member of the coalition 
to uh, join it and you can find information on on our website thank you thank you very much emir muchísimas gracias por por su respuesta thank you for your answers and your comments i would like to thank you for your incredible presentations for the discussion i think that we have a more broader understanding of the role of family farming and agroecology in the environmental and climate change agenda but also the economic and social agenda of our region I would also like to thank Dr. Vivian Gregorio, the Director of the Innovation Department for Family Production of the Family Farming of the Ministry of Agricultural Development of Brazil. And I would also, doc, Dr. Vivian, I don't know whether you would like to say a few closing remarks before we close this uh, session. Hello, everyone. I'm Vivian, and my mission is uh, to lead this important department of the discussion about agroecology. It's key for family farming today, particularly if we think about the context uh, we are living today. This is a process that it's been uh, it carried out in Brazil and Latin America. We need to think about production and leadership. We have certain concerns about the reduction of food production, which is something that we need to be capable to tackle. Even though we've had progress already, when we had the first organic production policy as part of the national policies, actually we have different ministries that are working on this process. Now, that is uh, a win, but still there are challenges we need to solve. When we think about the production of healthy food, uh, and if we think about quantity and quality, we need a technology matrix to foster bi biodiversity, and also we need to think about sustainable systems. Now, this is a strategic pillar for our government, and it's one of the uh, goals to ensure to ensure peace to our society so that they can have access to food in order to reduce poverty. This is the path to reduce poverty is to increase the access to good and healthy food and enough food. And I would like to apologize for being late. Actually, last night, the minister asked me to substitute him in a meeting to discuss very sensitive topics, so I had to be there. So I apologize for being late today. But I know that Cassio Trovato was here, and he is the general coordinator for our department. So we had a good representative. So I'm here at your disposal. I think that we need to continue to make progress. And all of this is key for us to focus on the technical support and political support that agroecology needs in Brazil and Latin America and the world in general. Thank you for your words and for uh, joining this session, your closing remarks. So we are going to close today's session, the recording of the presentations and the discussions are going to be published in the um, website for Family Farming. And in October the 12th, we are going to have as the second session of this series of conversations. And we're going to be talking about agroecology and institutions. And we're going to have presentations about uh, public policies and how these public policies uh, focus on family farming. So I would like to invite you to uh, register to participate in the next webinar so that we can continue having 
conversations on this topic about agroecology, family farming, and I hope that you have a very nice afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. And again, we apologize for the delay at the beginning. Have a nice day.